Hey there, uh, Ben Graves here, Associate Professor of Music at Volunteer State Community College, and I thought I would do a video about triadic inversions uh, and little chords, little chords. These are uh, chords for the guitar or any instrument uh, comprised of three notes. Some of those notes may be repeated, um, and it still is a triad if, if the uh, note occurs twice but it's a, a three note triad. Um, it, on the guitar that means you're not strumming six strings necessarily or even five strings or even necessarily four strings but you can have a smaller chord voicing or shape. So triads by definition have three notes uh, and if all three notes are represented, which they would need to be to be a triad, uh, it would be the root, the third, and the fifth. The root, let's take the key of G, the official Nashville guitar key. So G major scale is G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Or for those of you who have had some geeky solfege experience, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So the triad will consist of the root, which is G, the name, the tonic, home note of the chord, the third, one, two, three, the third note in the scale, and the fifth note in the scale, one, two, three, four, five, or Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, G, A, B, C, D, right? So you take that G, B, and D, and that gives you your triad. Now, if you put it in root position with the tonic note on the bottom, you end up with a, a triad that sounds like this. Now because the, car, the guitar is so freaky, you can play it like this or even this. Uh, and you've got three different ways to play that triad in that octave in root position on the guitar. But let's use this one. Um, for the purpose of this video, let's focus on these D, G, and B strings, the fourth third and second strings of the guitar, D, G, and B, that is actually a second inversion triad. I mentioned inversions. Um, if you invert something, you flip it upside down so that the bottom is on the top, or vice versa, I think. So if we put this G triad in root position, you have G, G, B, D, in that octave. So we can invert it by taking the B and putting that on the bottom so that we have B, B, D, G, B, D, G. So that's three, five, one, instead of one, three, five, right? And yet again, uh, you can, that's the first inversion where you take the G and flip it up to the top. Uh, the highest note in the chord. So you have three, five, one. Right, the third is on the bottom, the fifth is in the middle, and the root or the tonic, the G itself, is on the top. So that is a first inversion triad. Um, and then we can achieve a second inversion triad by putting the D on the bottom or flipping the G and the B up to the top. So you end up with D, G, B, and that you can achieve at the 12th fret by barring the notes. I guess you could play them like this if you wanted to. And actually the open fourth, third, and second strings of the guitar are a second inversion G triad. That's why some people argue that the guitar is kind of in the key of G, although you have E's. So it's probably a better argument that the guitar, the guitar is in the relative minor of G, which is E minor, uh, with some kind of suspended action going on there, maybe an E minor sus. I don't know. Um, yeah, I digress. So we have a root position triad in the key of G at the fifth fret. Uh, most people play this with the third finger, the second finger, and the first finger. And then to get to this 
first inversion triad, uh, probably the most useful way to play it in this octave is uh, at the ninth fret, the ninth fret of the D string, which is the B, and the D, the seventh fret of the G string, and then on the eighth fret of the B string, you have the tonic, the G. So that's a first inversion G major triad. And then a second inversion G major triad would be at the 12th fret, barring those notes. Now, um, uh, just to cover all of my bases, there are four types of triads. Uh, there are major triads, minor triads, where you lower the third degree of the scale or the chord by a half step to a flat of third. So major triad, minor triad. There are uh, diminished triads where you flat the third and the fifth. Uh, and then there are, are augmented triads where you raise the fifth degree. So you have root, third, sharp five, one, three, sharp five. And in the key of G, that would be G, B, D sharp. So you have augmented, diminished, major, and minor. And um, to achieve those other triads in these positions, all you would do, all you would do, you would need to know, <laughs> you would need to know what the third of the chord is, and then you flat the third, you need to know what the fifth of the chord is, and then you flat that. And you can do this geometrically. Uh, we guitar players deal in shapes. It's true. But it's always better to know your theory and know your neck. And if you know both of those things, then you can, uh, certainly if you know all 12 of your major scales, you can find the third, you can find the fifth, and you can do the math in your head, and you'll know what the notes are supposed to be. And if you know your neck, you can achieve the chord voicings that way. Uh, and a lot of people do this sort of geometrically, but I think um, I know that the better path is to learn your theory and learn your neck, be able to ultimately know the names of the notes on your neck. So uh, what are the advantages of this? Well, instead of being locked into, let's take a 1-4-5 progression in the key of G, G, C, D, you could achieve this with G, C, D, or G, C, D, or you could do it up here um, in the uh, seventh position or the ninth position uh, with G, C, D, or uh, you could do it up here too with G, C, D, right? So you can play any any uh, one, four, five tune with these little chords, these triads, instead of these bulky, cumbersome six note voicings all the time. Um, and you achieve what we call voice leading, which is where the chords move smoothly between one another uh, because the notes resolve to a neighbor tone instead of skipping up a fourth or a fifth. So in this case, to get really geeky, when we go to the four chord, the third of G, the B, moves up to the tonic of the four chord, the C. The fifth of uh, the, the root position G triad, D, moves up a whole step to the third of the four chord. And then when you move from the five chord, or to the five chord, from the four chord, and we've got, so this is a second inversion C triad that I'm moving to from a root position G triad. And then I can move to a, uh, I said, first inversion C triad to a, uh, no, second inversion C triad to a first inversion D triad with the F sharp in the bass. So F sharp, A, D. Um, in the key of D, that's uh, three, five, one. Um, and so that's voice leading. Uh, it keeps it from sounding uh, really skippy. It, it, it doesn't sound so disjunct. Um, the, the movement of the voices, of the notes and the chords sound more smooth. So that's what triads can do for you. Um, and it's, it's best, go ahead and practice these. Find your minor triad. So here's a G minor root position triad. And here's a C minor second inversion triad. And then you can move to a, um, a uh, first inversion D minor triad. And it'll be a really dark sound. One minor, four minor, five minor. 
back to one minor. But you could do that in all the positions and it would be a great little uh, workout. So here's one minor in the key of G minor to a four minor C minor triad. Um, and then, um, yeah, so you got uh, one minor, four minor, and you can walk on up to five minor there, or you could move down to five minor here. Um, that's D minor, second inversion. A, D, F. So again, one, four, five, or one, uh, one, four, five. Uh, and you could do it up here too. Um, uh, yeah, you can do, you can, you can voice lead these triads in one position in three different places on the neck. Um, so that would be one minor uh, in tenth position to four minor in, uh, I don't know, fifteenth position, uh, thirteenth position. I don't think about these positions too much. And you could move up to get your five minor or you could put it right there. Uh, and again, and I'm using uh, triads on the fourth, second, and third, uh, fourth, third, and second strings, the D, G, and B strings. But you know, it's great to do this to learn these in um, in groups of, of three strings, so that you're kind of fluent uh, with these little chords in a lot of different places on the neck. So much more to talk about with this, but. Um, ideally, if you really want to understand your theory and understand triads um, and, uh, and the members of the major scale and the modes of the major scale and what each of the functions of the major scale, the notes of the major scale sound like individually, uh, the first step is really learning all 12 of your major scales. It's really not that hard. Get yourself a copy of the cycle of fifths. And just memorize which scales have which sharps and how many sharps in them. Uh, and it will just supercharge your musicianship and your understanding and your ability to hear it. Uh, once you can learn to hear this stuff, which is ear training, um, that's really when the fun starts. That's when you can speak the language of music. So music theory is what's for dinner. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel here, please join me and I'll be posting more and more of these and thanks for watching.